If you look at the bench press as performed by competitive powerlifters, you'll notice that nearly all lifters try to achieve some level of arch. This puts the ribs in a position that creates more of a decline press, and it trims the range of motion for the bench. For some, it trims it a little, and for others, it trims it a lot. The arch has been a contentious topic for as long as I can remember, giving fodder to internet trolls and creating openings for undereducated know-it-alls on the internet to warn everyone that that's gonna destroy your back. Now, this controversy has recently sparked a big change in the rules of one of the world's biggest powerlifting federations, the IPF. The use of extreme arching had allowed a small section of lifters to fulfill the requirements of the bench on paper, which would be to basically touch your chest and straighten your arms, while moving the bar very, very little overall. This made a select number of people very mad and things were set into motion and changes were made. Now, I'm gonna do my very best here to not just sit here and tell everyone my opinion about these things. My, my goal and my focus with this video is to try to, as objectively as possible, take a look at the rules, think about what they are, think about the implications as a lifter, as a coach, as a referee or judge, and to try to create some sort of constructive dialogue around them, as well as to point out where I think there's a fair bit of ambiguity and where clarification is gonna be necessary. If there's any hope for any sort of consistent judging, and I think that's absolutely paramount when we're talking about implementing new rules like this. All right, so when you scroll down, you're gonna to come to the bench press rules as written. Again, this does not take effect until January 1st of 2023. I'm really hoping that there will be further clarifications because as you'll see, there are a number of things that are very much open for interpretation the way these rules are laid out currently. So the first addition here uh, is that there's now a sort of minimum acceptable amount of your buttocks, of your butt that needs to be on the bench. Now, this says that the photos, the, the, the picture, proper starting position and setup shows the minimum acceptable. So we scroll on down, there's a bunch of stuff about uh, elbow depth, we'll talk about that in a minute. But this is the lifter who's illustrating the proper amount of the butt to be on the bench. So, um, you know, we have a, a distance of about that much of the butt touching the bench. And then this is the photo to illustrate what is not good. And the first thing we notice here, obviously, is that the lifter's stance is wide. I don't know if that is somehow going to be an issue if you have a, a wide stance on your bench, because it doesn't refer to the stance, but it does refer to how much of your butt is on the bench. Now, is how much of your butt on the bench, you know, uh, intrinsically linked with how wide your stance is? I, I don't think so but it's a it's a very interesting choice of photo given that we don't actually have any idea how much of this lifter's butt is on the bench we we can't we can't see it so they provide us with another photo and in this photo we can see again exactly zero of how much of the lifter's butt is on the bench so i'm going to go ahead and make an assumption here and try to explain my interpretation of the rule which i think it, the, the fact that I have to make an assumption about it and explain my interpretation of the rule is exactly the issue um, and the ambiguity here because I need to take the rules and then make my own interpretation of them. A different referee, um, a different lifter, a different coach is going to have a different interpretation which opens us up to very, very inconsistent judging and inconsistent calls. So this is something I very much hope that is clarified. But one of the things that I think that the people uh, creating these rules is trying to get away from is this excessive tilting of the pelvis, um, which means it's it's going to be almost more groin and adductors that are in contact with the bench and, and less of the butt kind of down on the bench. So I, I think that's kind of what they're getting at, but it, it is unfortunate that they chose these photos. It's very hard to determine what it is that this lifter is doing wrong other than having a really wide stance. Um, again, so that's, that's, that's the first place that I think some clarification is absolutely necessary. One more thing with the sort of acceptable amount of butt that must be on the bench. Uh, this is definitely going to play into those lifters whose hips lift, but don't come off the bench. 
I think we're going to see more calls on those. We're going to see more lifters who kind of float their butt or have a change in the amount of their butt that is on the bench. We're going to see more of that getting called because now there is a minimum acceptable. So if the lifter starts with the minimum acceptable, maybe during the, during the press, their butt moves and becomes less than the minimum acceptable. Again, very much open for interpretation. Um, not, not ideal for technical rules. So the second rule change here is that during the setup, the athlete's not allowed to place his or her feet on the bench. Um, this is one that I think will affect a lot more people than some of the other rules. It definitely impacts my own personal setup. And uh, I think probably a lot of lifters I coach, that's one of the things that I like to do to get a little bit of a positional advantage. So um, they're, they're taking that away and that's something to be aware of. Now I'm not sure if you put your feet on the bench, um, are, are they gonna not give you the start command? Are they gonna give you a replace command when you unrack? Are you gonna have to stand back up? Are they gonna warn you while you're setting up? Or are they just gonna red light you? Um, that would be something that I would like to see clarified is if a lifter puts their feet on the bench while setting up, how do you handle it as a, as a judge, as a referee, what's the, what's the call? Do you wait and red light them? Like I said, it could, could be a lot of things. Now the actual elbow depth rule here is underside of both elbow joints, which I think we can pick out pretty easily <clears throat> is lowered level width, uh, or below the top surface of each respective shoulder joint. Now, this becomes a little bit of a gray area when we look at the shoulder joint itself, which is actually comprised of multiple joints, most notably um, the AC joint where your, your clavicle joins with the, the top of your, your shoulder blade, kind of, there you go, yeah. You can palpate it, you, you can feel along your shoulder blade to where it kind of uh, ends. And that I think is what uh, what we're getting at with the rule. There's also the glenohumeral joint, which is gonna be much lower if you're looking at the front of a lifter head on. So it would be good to have some clarification there in terms of which shoulder joint are we trying to look for? Because obviously we can't see either of these really. Um, and especially when we get into heavier lifters and bigger lifters and lifters with different joint lengths, um, different amounts of, of scapular retraction, right? The shoulder joints can be in very different places for very different lifters. It's, it's already going to be somewhat challenging to infer, okay, you know, without going up and touching the lifter, where are, where, where is the shoulder joint, you know, and where's the top of it? Top surface. The first thing I thought when I saw this rule and saw top surface of each respective shoulder joint was that it would be just the front of the delt, right? So if we're looking at these, it would be, you know, there, there's the front of the delt there, there's the front of the delt there. Um, but it looks like they're pointing towards, again, like I kind of pointed out earlier, it looks like they're pointing towards this, which again is an inference, right? Nobody's, nobody's gonna get up and palpate these lifters. We don't have an x-ray on the platform. Um, so we're gonna have to figure out, you know, where to the best of our ability, where the, where the top of the shoulder joint is and how that's situated in very different lifters in very different positions. So we've got a couple of illustrations, a um, couple different camera angles on some of these illustrations. So it does make it uh, a little tricky to kind of, you know, compare one to the other when they're slightly different camera angles. Anybody who's judged a squat from the front and from the back will know exactly what I'm talking about because your perspective on the orientation of somebody else's body is very, very impactful. So again, you can see here, if it was the top of the delt, you know, we're in. If it's the top of the delt, that side's still high, right? So as best I can tell, looking at this photo, what we're seeing here is that maybe one side is good uh, and the other side is, is not, right? So whether we go by the AC joint or the top of the delt, in either case, if this representation of his elbow is, is accurate, uh, and it looks like it's maybe, that line's a little bit long, it's kind of drawn to the outside of the angle. So it's a little tough to tell there. <clears throat> And then with this lifter, um, again, looks like, okay, probably AC joint because looks like their delt is right there and shoulder, sorry, elbow is there about in line. And on this side, again, tough to tell where the delt is, I guess, when you get people in these big arched positions. So maybe even that isn't the ideal metric. Uh, and this line looks to be halfway down her forearm. So it's tough, tough to tell there uh, as well. 
So the depth, I think, is going to be one of those things. We're probably going to need to see a lot of examples of this. Um, we're probably going to need some sort of some sort of training for referees to know exactly what to look for. Um, we're going to need probably some more specific language. And I really, I really do hope we get that. If these rules are going to stick, if this is the way we want to go, then okay, you know, all right. I was pretty salty for a bit. I still have a fair bit of salt about the whole thing, but, um, you know, if we're, if we're going to do this, let's, let's figure out exactly what these terms mean. Let's get some very good illustrations of these terms and let's make sure that every single time that this bench depth is called, it's going to be almost or very close to the same. So one more thing, we'll look at my, my bench depth here. So this is a recent video of ours. Um, where I was doing some bench pressing. Now, as best I can tell, right, if we're looking at, okay, so AC joint-ish, right? Elbow, elbow, I should be well in, right? Well in. But if somebody's looking at the seams on my shirt, for example, uh, as opposed to, I don't know, I don't know. It, like anybody could be looking at, uh, any any number of different markers to try to help them landmark where the lifter's shoulder joint might be uh you know that starts to get into a little bit more dicey territory so yeah again uh it's going to be really interesting to to figure all of this out um as a coach i think your best bet is to probably just hold off making any changes for now for your lifters um unless you have a meet early january as a lifter, again, um, I've started practicing not putting my feet on the bench uh, because that's a pretty easy change to make. If you're one of those lifters who is able to take advantage of a very big arch, uh, yeah, you're probably gonna have to play around with your grip. Um, you're probably gonna have to potentially find a way to lessen that arch, maybe. Uh, I'm not sure. The implications for those lifters are really big and, and very impactful, I think, in their performance. So anyways, um, I hope that helps to clear up some things. Um, I, I wanted to offer my interpretation of the rules. I still think there's a lot to be learned here. And yeah, I, I want to know what everybody thinks about this. So let us know in the comments below if you have a different interpretation. Um, if you think my, my questions are just totally whack. Uh, if you love the rules, if you hate them, if you don't really care. What are your thoughts? Let us know. Anyways, um, yeah, more on this as it uh, as it unfolds, I guess. Once we get some clarification, we'll let everybody know. We'll try to keep everyone as up to date as we can on this stuff. All right, take it easy.